Hi, I'm Bob. We will continue our solutions to the third part of Chapter Six about the short run production. One variable and one fixed input are used in the short run production. We usually assume that labor is the variable input and capital is the fixed input in the short run. Let's solve exercise three point one. If each extra worker produces an extra unit of output, how do the total product of labor, the average product of labor, and the marginal product of labor vary with the number of workers? If each extra worker produces one more unit of output, then the total product of labor is a straight line with a slope of one. The marginal product of labor is a constant of one. It is a horizontal line at one. The average product of labor is the total product divided by the total number of workers. It is also a horizontal line at one. This case does not illustrate the law of diminishing marginal return. Let's do exercise three point two. Each extra worker produces an extra unit of output up to six workers. After six, no additional output is produced. Draw the total product of labor, the average product of labor, and the marginal product of labor curves. The total product of labor is a straight line with a slope of one up to six workers. Then it becomes a horizontal line because the output does not increase as more workers are employed. However, such production is inefficient and not a part of the production function. So I draw it with a dashed line. The marginal product of labor is a constant one up to six workers, and it is a constant zero after that. The average product of labor is a horizontal line at one up to six workers, and then it drops gradually. The marginal product of labor is the slope of the total product curve, while the average product of labor is the slope of the straight line. Connecting the origin and the point on the total product of labor curve. Let's find answers to exercise three point three. In the short run, a firm cannot vary its capital, k equals two, but it can vary its labor, l. It produces output q. Explain why the firm will or will not experience diminishing marginal returns to labor in the short run if its production function is q equals ten times l plus k. The production function is q equals ten times labor plus capital. In the short run, capital is fixed at two. The short run production function is. Q equals two plus ten times zero. The marginal product of labor equals partial Q over partial L equals ten. It is a constant. It is not a function of labor, so the firm will not experience diminishing returns to labor. Let's go to exercise three point four. Suppose that the Cobb Douglas production function is Q equals L to the power zero point seven five times K to the power zero point two five. In part one, what is the average product of labor holding capital fixed? Holding capital fixed, the average product of labor equals output divided by labor. 
it equals k over l to the power one fourth. In part B, what is the marginal product of labor? The marginal product of labor equals partial output divided by partial labor. It equals three over four times k over l to the power one fourth. In part C, work out the average product of labor and marginal product of labor when capital equals sixteen. We substitute the value into the average product of labor and the marginal product of labor, and find the answer. Let's solve exercise three point five. If the Cobb Douglas production function is as follows, and capital equals sixteen, what is the elasticity of output with respect to labor? The derivative of output with respect to labor is as follows. The elasticity of output with respect to labor, epsilon, is the percentage change in output over the percentage change in labor. It equals three over four. It is a constant. It does not depend on capital. Another method is to take the logarithm on both sides and then use another expression of the elasticity to obtain the answer. Let's jump to exercise three point six. In the short run, a firm cannot vary its capital K equals two, but can vary its labor L. It produces output Q. Explain why the firm will or will not experience diminishing marginal returns to labor in the short run if the production function is a linear function. The marginal product of labor is a constant ten. It does not change with labor. So the firm will not experience diminishing marginal returns to labor in the short run. If the production function is a Cobb-Douglas function, we first plug in the value of capital and then find the marginal product of labor. Because the derivative of the marginal product of labor with respect to labor is negative, the firm will experience diminishing marginal returns to labor, or diminishing marginal product of labor in the short run. Thank you very much for doing the exercises with me today. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.